So with the information released that we are getting four new DLC classes, I decided to take a look at the history of DLC classes in Fire Emblem to get a sense for what we might see in Three Houses. So let's get started. Our first DLC class actually comes from Fire Emblem Shadow Dragon for the Nintendo DS. The Falcon Knight class could only be accessed by using the online shop. Using in-game currency, the player could purchase a special promotion item, the Elysian Whip. With it, Pegasus Knights could promote into Falcon Knights instead of Draco Knights. In the original Shadow Dragon for the NES, Draco Knight was the only promotion option for Flyers, but Falcon Knight was probably added so players wouldn't miss a class that's been in every game besides FE1 and FE3. It was filling a gap that players would miss. The next appearance of DLC classes came in Fire Emblem Awakening for the 3DS. This game had two DLC classes that could be unlocked using special items received in downloadable levels. These classes were Dreadfire, making its first appearance since Fire Emblem Gaiden, and Bride, an original class for the game. Dreadfighter added another hybrid class to Awakening, allowing units to make use of swords, axes, and magic. Dreadfighter also boasted some powerful skills, the first being Resistance plus 10, and the other being Aggressor, which is the precursor to what Deathblow is in Three Houses. Bride was built to be the ultimate support unit. It has access to staves, and the best rally skill in the game being Rally Heart. This rally gave all units within a 3 tile radius plus 2 to all stats and plus 1 to move. Both of these DLC classes felt like you paid for them. They had powerful traits about them that made them useful additions to any army. So it would seem the point of these DLC classes was to give a player a buff option to play with, either to make the game easier or to just change the experience. Another aspect in the inclusion of Dreadfighter was an attempt to call back to an older game in the series. I would not be surprised if the Three Houses DLC did this as well in an attempt to appease hardcore fans or to build interest in older games in the series. Now, let's move on to Fire Emblem Fates, which added a slew of DLC classes. There were eight in total. Every single one of these classes is a callback to a class or character from an older game in the series. We have Dreadfighter, Dark Falcon, Ballistician, Witch, Lodestar, Vanguard, Great Lord, and Grand Master. All of these classes learn powerful skills and have really high base stats. They make just about any unit good to great from the moment you class change into them. Finally, let's take a brief look at Fire Emblem Echoes Shadows of Valentia. The game's DLC added overclasses. They were all part of the normal class promotion lines and added another tier above them. They were very powerful and they allow your units to level even further than they could before. Taking all of this into account, what will we see in three houses? Let me know in the comments and we will go over your thoughts in tomorrow's video. Thanks for watching friends and have a great day.